Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of Warp Soulstorm casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 1 vs 1 on Battle Marshes. Playing on the northern side as the Dark Eldar, we've got OSD Korea. Playing on the southern side as the Force of Chaos, we've got Ferocious Creature. Creature will be opening with a couple of cultists, a heretic and a chaos temple. Whereas OSD Korea is going to go for Double Mandrakes, a Dark Foundry and a Plasma Generator. So this game was played a couple of years ago. I digged deep into the Dawn of War replay website just to find like a couple of games. Like I didn't really fancy doing any more Orc games. We've done plenty of Orc and Eldar games recently. It's been a while since we've seen Eldar up against the um, Chaos Space Marines. So yeah, why not? Let's see how this thing goes. And there are plenty of replays for it, so I imagine this was very highly regarded back in its day. So quite excited to see how this game goes. It's going to be opening up some Chaos Space Marines. As if you're going up against Dark Eldar, you can imagine they're probably going to go some sort of jet bike nonsense. Or at least some Hellion nonsense. And, I mean, Chaos Space Marines got heavy armor, so they're able to resist that incoming damage. A little bit nicer than the Heretics. The Heretics will kind of die more or less straight away, so kind of need to get some bigger, chunkier boys. Also, plenty of uh, strategic points for them to capture on a map like this, so definitely need some more capping units early out in that game, so you don't fall behind in the map control. You're going to see the Cultists going on the right-hand side, capturing the Relic. Whereas I imagine the uh, Dark Elder are going to leave their Mandrex to do their business while the... Oh, we're not seeing anything. Oh, because we're going to see the... Homunculus Laboratory first. Okay, so sometimes you see the Hellions come out while the Homunculus Laboratory is on the go. It can't get any jetbikes until this bad boy has been built up. Uh, so I, I assume that you're saving up money for either an early tier 2 or he's going to flood the field with a lot more jetbikes than you would normally at this stage of the game. It's fair play to everyone. You see Chaos Space Marines now pushing out on the left-hand side. Maybe going to go for cheeky double uh, relic capture. Mandrake's already uh, running out over here. Going to be capping it themselves. Now, this point of heavy cover here, and this point of heavy cover here, might be a major bonus for the Chaos Space Marines if they can kind of egg out those engagements into these areas, kind of denying the jet bikes their range damage. The jet bikes, obviously, being a flying motorcycle, doesn't really have much in the way of melee damage. Mandrakes are being shot up. We'll fall back to the light cover down on this side. Maybe the Chaos Space Marines will forget that they're even there. Yeah, there we go. Hide in the bushes. No one can see yet. Stealthiest Mandrex, none to man. Oh, dear, oh, dear. They have been spotted. It's not going to engage in some combat, but one Reaver jet bike going around the flanks and firing away. Yeah, as you can see, the Heretics would be dying a lot quicker here, but no, the Chaos Space Marines themselves able to resist the damage. Still do it. You know, I mean, the, the jet bike still does a fairly good job against them, but definitely what you want on this side of the battle. Mandrex going to be spotting. Oh, quite like this. A heavy bottle to it on this side already, anticipating that they can't hold on to both. So may as well try and go for both. I'll try and go for one, at the very least, consolidating that hold with a heavy bolt turret. And that will certainly scare away these Reaver jet bikes for a little while. They cannot really take much damage. The Chaos Space Marines actually, like I say, hiding in that heavy cover, but there's still too much melee damage incoming from the Mandrake, so not wanting to stay there for too long. Colt's going to attempt to slice away these guys as best they can, but only one Chaos Space Marine soon to be left over. We'll try and reinforce for the second one. Can they get the squad wipe yet? Yep, just narrowly avoiding that death. Going to pop down a heavy bottle turret down here. I imagine this listing post will probably want to be upgraded at some point. Chaos Lord coming out with a mean bolter pistol. Should scare these guys away. The Korean jet bikers falling back. Whether it's North Korean or South Korean, I'll let you decide. Kind of reminds me, if, you've, if you're not familiar with South Korean music or North Korean music, if you type into the YouTube, it's not now, obviously, because you want to watch this video, you know, for the viewer engagement. But after this video... Type into YouTube Kamjet Jalang, which is a fantastic um, nationalistic song from North Koreans about collecting potatoes. It's truly a phenomenal song. You'll want it being played at your funeral. Definitely good stuff. But <laughs> so minor diatribe there. Cool, this being chased around. Still by the Reaver Jet Bikes. One squad of those guys are now dead and dying inside the Dark Eldar base. Sad times in the pipelines for those boys. Also some Samaj Baji. And the Sad Chaos Lord doing what he absolutely loves best, which is slapping people around in close combat. Putting on a tainted all specs. Not for detecting anyone, but for just kind of seeing when people are going to go for those relics down there. So quite a nice actual idea there. All these Mandrakes do have the option to go infiltrated, but they will need their uh, warrior hall, hall of blood, or blood hall, whatever you call that. Tier 2 on the way for OSD Korea, and Tier 2 a little bit further behind for the Chaos Space Marines. But Furious Creature, Furious by name, Furious by nature, quadruple Reaver jet bikes now actually. If the Mandrakes go in first, 
and focus down the heavy bottom turret. They should be all right for pushing into this side. I'm going to see a minefield on this corner. I wonder why. Unless, of course, they're anticipating um, some... Well, I mean, what do you call them? The flying bird people. Scourges, that's what they call it. If they jump over here, I get blown up. Also, tin all specs in the trees here. Very nice placement for it. Did not know that you could actually do that. Mandrake's going to spoon on forward. One singular kill space screen has not been reinforced. Ah, oh, there we go. It's now being reinforced. Like I say, going to focus down on the heavy bolts of it. Same with this listing post as well. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know how we knew that the Reaver Jet Bikes were going to go down there. Well, I suppose maybe they're to fire away at that Chaos Temple. Out of the range of all this stuff. But Heavy Bottle goes down. Listing post soon to follow as well. But losing half of the Reaver Jet Bikes here. Not sure if it's a fair trade. Chaos Lord still more or less full health here. We're going to lose a Listing post by the looks of things. Mandrake's falling akimbo left and right. As the post goes down. Now they can turn their attention to the Chaos Space Marines, and they do have that Reaver targeting module, so now their DPS is going to go through the roof. Absolutely. Also ideal for hunting down those heretics wherever they may be found. Go and see a uh, Chaos Pizza of Doom. I haven't quite put down the pizza toppings on it just yet. Killing that heretic means that it's not going to be finished built, although just narrowly avoiding it being built. Another heretic is going to come out and see if he can finish the job. They've been shot down more or less straight away. Very unfortunate, because uh, at this stage of the game, the Chaos Space Marines, really, what they want is either Hell Talent or a... Oh, dear. That poor Reaver Jet might be getting blasted by the minefield. But, yeah, you kind of want a Hell Talent or a couple of them to counter the Reaver Jet Bikes or a Defiler. Chaos Lord has gone down there. Another Heretic being killed in as well. And the Chaos Space Marines, the real bad bind at the moment. Having things decaps, what? The economies at the moment are 68 and 20 compared to 80 and 40. So, actually... They're doing all right. I suppose that the, yeah, the Dark Elder have not really upgraded their listing puzzle. Although they are starting to do so now, but uh, they've got a weird slave chamber being placed here. And, oh, very cheeky. Furious creature popping down the machine pit down here of the heretic that's been left down on this side. So actually that placement of the heretic potentially saving the Chaos Space Marines here if they can get back in the saddle. They've got a fair bit of money saved up. And they're not losing too much of their economy. I mean, yeah, okay, they're going to lose a couple of plasma generators. Tower of Loving being cheekily placed inside the Chaos Space Marine base here. But the Reaver Jet Bikes, they're not known for their ability. I mean, look at them. They've been firing out this machine pit for quite some time. Not really getting it down. Probably need to bring these guys down south and focus more on these plasma generators. Got more likelihood of killing these guys than anything else. I suppose they're hanging around here because they don't know that there is a secondary machine pit on the flanks over here. Also rebuilding those plasma generators. Gonna go for a Chaos Sorcerer as well. I wonder if the, the idea is to change Torment to lock these guys into position. They've got their melee upgrade, as you can tell by their electric slashings. Or however one would describe such umbral slices. I like that, umbral slices. Well, we'll call them that from now on. A Helton comes along, and only a couple of shots gets them down. Chaos Sorcerer popping out. We'll throw down some big purple blasts. I don't think he's got Chains of Torment at the moment. I think you've got to upgrade that separately in the Demon Pit. Will Teleport away already taking a significant amount of damage. He's going to fall back. Might want to fall back into the minefield for him. But no, very low on health. Only 50 remaining. Got a Raider now coming out. But the Raider will also struggle against the Hell Talons. We'll do a little bit more damage considering that it's got a Dark Lance, but we'll focus instead on the economy of the... Oh, that's very cheeky as well. Yeah, more Towers of Loving here. So, and what? You only need it alive for about a minute and a half for it to repay for itself. So, definitely worth the investment. Going to see a Defiler out as well. Cultist hiding in the bushes. Not going to try and attempt to save the Chaos Sorcerer here. Leaving him to his own devices. But the Chaos Sorcerer giving them the old dirty dirt around the listing post will force them back. It does seem, by hook and by crook, the Chaos Space Marines have somehow managed to reclaim a good shot. Well, they're about to reclaim everything here now. Mandrake's managing to take down one more listing post, though, so massive gains from Dark Eldar here. And what are you doing to benefit from this? Well, now you've got Helltown in your base, and you've only got one plasma generator, so huge push into Chaos Space Marine base. Might not translate well into the later stages of the game. All the blood just about to finish going straight away for that Mandrake infiltrate. Oh, no, never mind. 
are going to go for scourges instead. Yeah, that makes sense. If the enemy are going to go for some airplay, a uh, ad advanced mind are probably not what you want to go for. Maybe still keep them in, considering that you've already got their melee upgrade. You know, just for the general harassment and whatnot. But yeah, scourges are probably what you want to defend yourselves against the Helltown, which is just flying over on high, unimpeded. We've got one singular Helltown actually carrying all the work here. Not sure what it's planning to do. Going around all over the place. Towers of Loving giving itself some Dark Lance as well. One of the, I think it's the only um, uh, listing post that can upgrade itself with anti-vehicle stuff. So very nice indeed. Out of trade of not having any turrets, but you know, got to balance the game somehow. Whether you agree with that balancing choice or not, it's not for me to decide. It's for the you, the viewer at home, even though they don't have this. Oh, even, yep. Let me say that again. Even though they don't update this game anymore, well, I suppose a torment patch is, is kind of like a quasi update for the vanilla soul storm. By the way, if you've not checked out torment patch, please do give it a go because it's uh, remarkable. I know that certainly that the Russian YouTubers tend to have a better uh, crack at it than I do. But if I cover that mod, well, it, it, it's too close to home with Soulstorm. It confused me to high heavens. But have a look at it, and this look quite good. One poor heretic with eight health left just cowering in the corner here as these Mandrakes go to business, and they absolutely slash their way through buildings. No problems whatsoever. Scourge is falling back to protect their newfound holdings over on this side. The Hell Talent taking their prisoners. Preventing the Dark Eldar from capturing this relic, which doesn't seem like they've done. Got slave chambers out and about the place. For vision, I imagine. If I just want to stay away from the scourges, though. One raider jumping over the edge. And if this guy can distract the defilers somewhat, I will allow the scourges to cut their way through the armor of the defilers, and they're doing it very nicely. Got the listing post, which has been saved. Narrowly. Yeah, those Mandrakes didn't seem to be able to kill it as quickly as they wanted to. No one felt the support of those scourges anyway. Ray now coming around to finish the job. Can't ignore that artillery from the Defiler for a little while. But, oh dear, no. It's focusing on the the, um, the machine pit instead. Not what you want. Not what you need in that situation. Dodge Slaves farming up some souls. And it's been an absolute bedlam so far. Eltar now coming back into their home base to try and break down this Tower of Loving here. And finally reclaim what is rightfully theirs. 60 and 40 for the Chaos Space Marines. Right to 1 of 4 and 20 for the Dark Eldar. Going for the... <laughs> I was about to read that as Sphincter Cannons. No, that's not what they are. Splinter Cannons. Completely different pieces of weaponry right there. The prior, more akin to Nurgle shenanigans rather than anything else. Plenty of defilers down here. Losing that listing post on the relic here. Might need to see some economy upgrades here for the Chaos Space Marines to catch up with the Dark Eldar at the moment. We see some regular old Chaos Space Marines. And more torture slaves from the Cabal Fortress. Eltan has gone down. And it's quite even, all things considered. Considering that the Chaos Space Marines have been absolutely trounced in the early game. As the game goes further onwards and upwards... Chaos Space Marines, they really do pop off in Tier 2 and Tier 3 when they get their obliterators, their possessed squads. I mean, hell, if, if the Dark Eldar try and go for many more raiders or other kinds of vehicle stuff, others also cut through these quite quickly as well. Scourges, on top of that, they kind of die quite quickly in a firefight. So I imagine that at some point, the Dark Eldar will want to transition to Witches and the Warp Beasts, especially if you combine the Witches' combat stimulants with the Warp Beast's redonkulous uh, melee damage. Anything and everything basically falls. We've seen it before on the channel. Entire Bane Blades die in the space of 10 seconds when they're surrounded by Witches and Warp Beasts when those combat stimulants are being activated. I do quite like how the Heretics are also repairing these Defilers as well. I mean, what the Chaos Space Marines, they don't have much money to play with, so you need to make sure that everything is being saved up as much as possible. Raider jumping right over. And then, are the mines still here? The mines are still there. Very nice stuff. But triple raiders and scourges, but scourges again also landing. What wonderful placement for mines there. The ferocious creature using his all seeing eye to spot the future by the looks of things. 
Seeing some crust of acid on top of the machine pit here. One heretic been shot down, another heretic soon to be killed in as well. Defiler trying to slice down this raider in close combat. Doing a fairly good job, but dying just before succeeding there. Chaos Space means interesting choice. I mean, I imagine your whole purpose is to get your heavy bottles on, or quadruple heavy bottles, and kill the sketch. We'll do very little against the raiders. They're unlike their Chaos Space Marine, or uh, sorry, their Loyalist Space Marine counterpart. A bit of heresy right there for you. Uh, they've got no access to missile launchers. So they've got to rely on either demons, defilers, or hell tones for their anti-vehicle purposes. Got Chaos Rhinander to be able to keep up those scourges. Going to be based on like scourge hunting missions at the moment. Chaos Rhinander can be killed quite easily by the scourges, but Rhinders are very cheap. They're kind of designed to be killed pretty quickly. Which Cult Arena on the way. So yeah, they will be transitioning away from the ranged scourge play in something more melee orientated got a, another squad of Chaos Space Marines on the way might be an idea as well in tier 3 to get the infiltration research well very frustrating for a faction like the Dark Eldar where they're only oh I think it's is it the it's the homunculus that can see infiltrated units and the mandrakes with their uh, demon eye upgrade which ideally you know, they're not amazing infiltration detection units it's not like the Imperial Guard way just pop down a little AOE infiltration detection, or you've got a command squad of the Psyker, or you can basically build four independent Psykers and attach them to anyone else. I think the only army that has worse infiltration detection is probably the Orcs. You've got your big mech, and you've got your war boss, and that's about it. Oh, you've got your mega noms as well. But ideally, you don't really want your heroes to be your primary infiltration detection, because it's just a massive pain. You can't be everywhere at once. Chaos Space Marines using the heavy cover to their advantage. The Reaver Jetbikes still have their Reaver Targeting Module upgrades, so they're still going to do a hell of a lot of damage against any kind of infantry or heavy infantry. Fowler should really turn their attention to killing the Reaver Jetbikes at the moment, but instead, going to focus on the Slave Chambers. We did see the... Oh, God, the Scream If You Want to Go Faster ability, which makes all the opponents a little bit scared. Oh, they've also got their Piercing Vision as well, which is a Soul Star... Well, not Soul Star ability. A Dark Eldar Soul ability. Soulstorm being an actual name of an ability that I can actually remember. Well, I suppose that one's quite easy considering that it's the name of the bloody game. Got some scourges on the way to take care of the, the final door. I don't think that's necessary. You've got your Witch Cult Arena now. And you've got your Raiders to take care of those. Well, I suppose you don't really want to have your Raiders going up against Hell Talons. As this guy does quite a lot of damage against vehicles himself. Go and see a Chaos Predator on the way. Oh, you've done for tier 3. Under my very nose. Have you gone for tier 3? Oh, I don't think you have. Huh. Maybe, maybe not. I can never remember. Chaos do weird things. With their tiers, which makes sense. Go and see that they are chaotic. The second slave chamber over here. Chaos Space Marines now turning their attention to the Tower of on the left hand side of the relics. Allowing the Predator alone to try and defend this. Got the uh, auto cannon out for it. Or just a regular cannon, not entirely sure if it's an auto cannon or just a boomy barrel. That's lots of anti vehicle for one Predator to deal with. Trying to fall back to this heavy bolt so that's been upgraded with some uh, missile launcher bits. But these guys will just politely ignore him, start focusing on this stuff. Will lose a plasma generator and a listening post if they don't defend this, but they already have a machine pit down here, so it's not the end of the world, the really. Well, also liking the placements of these heavy bottle turrets. Don't normally rate the idea of heavy bottle turrets in the later stages of the game, but if you all go up against the Dark Eldar player who can just jump straight to the middle of your base and out position, yep, then a couple of bolters in your base will do you a fair bit of good. Altan goes down from the shots fired from that Tower of Loathing. Car Space Marines doing their best, activating the, I mean, feel no pain, whatever you call it, to do more damage against Tower of Loathing. Chaos Rhino attempting to tank the damage, but the Tower of Loathing decided to change its target somewhere else. Fire now charging in into close combat. That's exactly what it wants to be against these scourges, but falling. A minefield, yep, wonderfully placed once again. Chaos Predator goes down. Chaos Space Marines. Looking to get involved in stuff, not quite 
being able to catch up with these guys as they fall back a little bit to take on, on this listing post here. Also got a Chaos Armory as well that they can chunk through. And what else are they going to go for? More... Uh, I think that's maybe maybe a bit overkill. I sang these praises, but maybe no, not many more. We're already seeing that the Chaos Space Mutants are struggling to defend themselves with just Defiles and Hell Talons. Do believe a horror squad or two, or Obliterators at the very least, because the Obliterators will kill the Scourges, they will also kill the Raiders. The only problem with them is that they're very slow, and they also, um, you know, will fall foul to the Witches and the Warp Beasts if they go for them. But if you get their personal teleporter and support them well enough with some regular Space Marines and a Defiler, they should do all right. Methinks, that's how my brain box is going on this. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I mean, I've, I've watched a couple of games in my times, boys and girls. I've seen one or two replays of the past few years of my life, so I think I've got a rough idea of what I'm on about. Filers, more of them are coming out. Yeah, we just, we just need bigger stuff. We need bigger stuff from the Chaos Space Marines. Scourges just constantly going across the battlefield. They've killed a bunch of stuff. Oh, no, they haven't killed all the stuff over here. They just killed the machine pit. Could have gone for this listing post, though. That would certainly help them. The economy is being 95 and 77 compared to 82 and 50 for the Dark Eldar. So is that in favour of... That's in favour of the Chaos Space Marines. So somehow they've managed to eclipse the Dark Eldar in economic output. Archon now gone for four... Um, oh, sorry, so three Incubi. So that's one upgrade for him. Every additional Incubi does increase the length and duration of his abilities. By right, Mighty Talos. Interesting. Not sure what he's going to do here. Very slow. Doesn't have a jump ability like he does in Ultimate Apocalypse or anything else like that. So the Rhino could just basically politely avoid him. Oh, no, being body blocked there. Go on. Slice him down. Raider also coming over as well. Show them the business. But very cheeky. Can't space me to see him as low on health. To pop out. Uh, give him a quick housey father. Talos' is now job is just to cut through this building. Actually does it fairly quickly, I must say. So maybe your job. Just sit in the corner and kill stuff. You can also collect souls if it wants, but I don't think there's that many souls on this side of the map. No, doesn't look like it. But so they've all evaporated. Got the Archon and the lads on the Blooming Raider as well. Can to pop some warriors on there as well. Might be an idea to actually pop some warriors on there. But then again, I suppose the Dark Elder have already got the squad caps quite high. The Scourges, I do believe, if memory serves, cost three spaces. Oh, no, I've got my... Oh, hold on. Am I misreading that? Was that the wrong number? 8 out of 20. No, you've got plenty more space. I'm not dyslexic. I'm just not very clever. Leave me alone. Or should I say discalculic? Because that was numbers. Same things, but different. That's how it works. Yeah, just defending there. Half and home on that side. And the Chaos Space Marines don't seem to really be able to punch their way through many things. Talos is now is finished killing everything over here. He's now coming over here to do some stuff. And Talos versus Defiler. We get some cinematic stuff for this. It, it's about that deserves it, really. Actually, I poo-poo the Talos every single time I see it. But just look how quickly it's able to cut through stuff. I wonder if it's able to get that same kind of damage output against a Dreadnought. Or any other kind of other factions walkers. But yeah. What a guy. What a dude. Don't mess with the dangerous Metal Scorpion. As he fades off into the distance. His soul leaving for the city of Kamora. Which, by the by, I'm recently reading a book called The Big Dakka which is a book about orcs going into the city of Kamora. If you're a fan of 40k literature, highly recommend it. Absolutely stunning book. I'm only maybe five or six chapters in, but already it's exactly what you think. If you imagine what the story would go like, it goes exactly the way you think, and it's it's just amazing. Ah, oh, see, now they're going for... Oh, okay, so you were in Tier 2. Right. Okay, so you can get Chaos Predators in Tier 2. I knew that was the case. Just always second guessing myself. You know, low self esteem, that's what it all comes down to. But, got the obliterators coming out. We'll see the possessed, I hope. That should be more than enough to be able to deal with this 
uh, unit composition here. Yeah, going to go for the demonic fire research first and foremost for anything else. Going to now see the witches and the warp beast coming up. Nice how we went for the witch squad first before losing that witch cult arena. And realistically, if you're gonna, if you're planning to keep your schedule alive, you only need one squad of the witches, as it is the warp beast that are the creme de la creme of the dark Eldar close combat stuff. I've gone for infiltrate marines. So we'll need to see a homunculus or some mandrakes coming out. But not seeing one coming out at the moment. It's so close. Really can't tell who's going to win this. Personal teleporters as well coming in. For the additional mobility of the obliterators. Which is an archon on the front line. Warp beasts coming around the backside. These guys... Moving down on this side, it's, it's a little bit dangerous on this map. If you ever go down here and you know the enemy's coming, very easy to fall prey to being flanked. Got the Ravens coming in. Very good against infantry and heavy infantry, as well as vehicles. Very fragile, though. And the Ryan has been fallen down. Warp Beast now engaging close combat. Second Warp Beast pack coming over here. Obliterators managing to fall back a little bit, but quite vulnerable in close combat. Want to teleport these guys away. If they can, at the very least. But, oh, no. Warp Beast keeping on top of them. And I don't know whether they're stuck on something or whether they're... Oh, they've got to stay still for a little bit. Teleport away. That's why they're trying to walk backwards. Fair enough. Only one surviving, but the Ravens in hot pursuit. And the Chaos Space is very unfortunate in losing that Rhino in that engagement. So they didn't have the proper equipment to retreat. Arco now going to charge in as well. I assume at some point in that engagement, he uses... Maledictum, Scary Skull, you are now 10 against your opponent kind of ability, which forces the enemy to fight amongst each other for a little while. And what a fantastic composition here. Scourges for the range stuff, witches and warp beasts for the close combat stuff, although the warp beasts all look like that like they died. There were a couple of minefields down here that they were walking onto. Oh no, there's, there's one squad down here. Obliterators taking out a fair few of those Scourges. It looks like they even got a squad wipe down here. But the addition of the Ravens, don't often see Ravens for the Dark Elder, which has always confused me because they're fantastically strong, very nimble, can reposition out of range of any anti-aircraft. But oh, there we go. There is the curse of the Maledictum, whatever. Stuns them as well as forces them to fight against each other. Got the Possessed Marines coming out. And if only these guys came out much earlier... Archon now stunning these guys well for separate ability as the Life Leech, I do believe it's called. Allow the Warp Beast to catch up, venting those possessed from charging over towards the Scourges. A Defiler punching that Scourge into the forest right there. We'll see Heavy Bottle to have been placed over here as the Possessed Marines fall back on this side for defensive reasons. Warp Beasts charging in. They do not have their Beastmaster at the moment. But actually, now they do. So if they lose them around, they should be fine and dandy for a little while at the very least, which is now focusing on the machine pit down here. Are we going to see replace? No, we probably won't see replace Obliterator Squad. Not when the melee combat strength of the Dark Eldar is where it is. Like I said, it would have been much more useful earlier on when there were no witches or war beasts, but now it's a bit of a moot point. Interesting first, being chewed down by all sorts. And Ferocious Creature throws out the GG. What a fantastic match from Bluff players. Like, I can see why it was downloaded so many times on the um, uh, Dawn of War replay website. But yeah, just all the way. I mean, uh, absolute phenomenal comeback from uh, Ferocious Creature here. Most players, when they lose, what, what was it? Lost three listing posts, as well as having listing posts of the opposing player being built on top of their own. Managing to save themselves with a cheeky machine pit down here. A couple of Helltowns sending the Dark Eldar backpack kicking and screaming and pulling their way back. At one point, even having a more impressive economy than the Dark Eldar, but not really transitioning to a uh, unit composition that would have taken down the Dark Eldar in that mid-game. I mean, yeah, like I said, the, the, the Ablate Rares wouldn't have worked against these guys uh, once they came out on mass, but, you know, they weren't there originally. But then the Dark Eldar, obviously, seeing, that, seeing what they can do, also wonderful use of these uh, Ravens that we don't normally see. So, fantastic. Amazing stuff. 
So thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound off gets you once a game a week. And there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description as always. I'm Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always, never short. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.